Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the TiVo Stream 4K. Now, this was actually released about four months ago, and I thought about doing a review on it. Then it fell off my radar. And recently, I was at my local Walmart, and I saw a stack of about 100 of these things, and they're going for 50 bucks. So I figured I'd go ahead and pick one up, and we'd take a look at it. Now, basically, what this is, is a TiVo-branded Android TV. You don't have to pay any subscription for TiVo or anything like that. It's running Android TV based on Android 9. And as you can see, it's another one of the dongle-style Android TVs. We have micro USB here for power. And to my surprise, there's actually a USB Type-C port here. It doesn't do power in, but you can attach different accessories to it, like external storage. So inside of the box, you're obviously going to get the TiVo Stream 4K dongle itself. You're also going to get a remote here. It's a TiVo branded remote with a Netflix button, and it can control your TV. But I'm more of a fan of the new Google Chromecast remote. I just like the look and feel of this thing. But the new TiVo remote itself does work fine with the TiVo Stream 4K. We're also going to get our power supply, 1 amp, 5 volts, and our micro USB cable to power the unit up. Plus, we got a little tiny user manual with not much information. So yeah, I think the biggest surprise of this thing was that inclusion of USB Type-C on the side is just going to make it a lot easier to add extra storage or USB controllers and things like that because after all, these little dongles don't come with much storage. Now, as for the specs, it's running Android TV based on Android 9. The CPU is the Amlogic S905Y2. This actually has the same specs as the new Chromecast with Google TV built in. The GPU is the Mali G31. We have 2 gigabytes of RAM, 8 gigabytes of internal storage, plus we can use that USB Type-C to add more down the road if you need to. It does 4K, 60 FPS, HDR, Dolby Vision, HDR10, and HLG. Now I'm going to tell you right off the bat, if you're looking for a good Android TV device or an Android TV dongle, and you want to spend around 50 bucks, I would go with the new Google Chromecast with Google TV. I personally think it's a superior product, but these, on Black Friday, are going to go way down at your local Walmart. And that's one of the big reasons I picked it up now, so we could take a look at it. If this was sitting at $20 to $30, and it will be around Black Friday 2020, I would definitely jump on something like this. But as it sits right now, the Chromecast is the same price as the TiVo 4K Stream, and I would choose the Chromecast over this every single day. But I still want to see how it performs, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. So setup was pretty easy with this, but there is one catch that I didn't see coming. Obviously, you do have to sign into your Google account in order to access the Google Play Store, but you also have to create a TiVo account. And you can't do it on this device itself. You actually have to move over to a PC or a phone to do this. You don't have to put any credit card information or anything like that, but you do have to create a TiVo account. It was definitely something that I tried to avoid. There's no key code that I could come up with to skip that access screen. So in order to even use this device, you will have to create a TiVo account. And that's going to be a big letdown for a lot of people. So I'm in here, I'm using the device. It's running Android TV. It's actually based on Android 9, so we don't have the newest version here. We got two gigs of RAM. We have that Amlogic CPU. And the reason I'm filming the screen with the camera is because this is my 4K display and I really want to see how this performs with 4K video playback from Plex, YouTube, and even Netflix. I'm going to make sure I'm set to 4K here from the settings. And I'm at 4K 60. You can go all the way down to 720p, 24 hertz if you really wanted to. But we definitely want to test at 4K 60. So as for your app selection, since it's running Android TV, we do have access to the Google Play Store. And just keep in mind, this is the Android TV version of the Google Play Store, so not all of the games and apps that you're used to playing on your phone will be available here. But all of the most popular streaming apps are here. Disney+, Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Netflix, Plex, all that good stuff can be downloaded. Now one thing that I noticed on the main menu is this TiVo Stream app. It doesn't require any payment or anything like that, and at first I was a bit upset that it was here, but then I started looking into it, and what this does is it populates all of the popular movies from the different apps that I have installed, and it kind of just gives me a list and suggestions on what to watch, and it also shows you if it's available on more than one app. So let's say you only have Netflix and you don't have Hulu, some of this stuff is available on both of those streaming services. And it gives you a little icon at the top of the movie so you know what it's available on. And if you own that streaming service, you can click on it and it'll launch that movie from that service. So after using the TiVo stream service for a little while, I started getting used to it. And I think it will come in handy for a lot of people. So we've got all these streaming services available, but we really need to see how they perform. So we're going to go with YouTube up front. And I'm going to test out one of my go-to videos. This is 4K 60 FPS. I do have stats for nerds on. 
And overall, I've actually had a really good experience with YouTube on this device. I'll just show you that we're at 4K. And on the initial load-in, you will get a few drop frames. I mean, this is normal on some higher-end devices. But as we play through, it's not going to drop anymore, and it's super steady. So YouTube video playback on this device really isn't going to be an issue. Let's skip ahead a little bit and just show you how fast it buffers out. And by the way, I am connected to my AC Wi-Fi network. Got a pretty good connection here. And just to give you an idea of how Netflix performs, we'll go with one of my favorite shows. And this isn't in 4K, but it'll just give you an idea of how fast everything loads up. I mean, we're right into it. Playback is really smooth. I have tested some 4K content from Netflix and I haven't run into any issues. You don't even see anything. So yeah, I mean, these streaming services are going to work just fine. 720, 1080, and even 4K if you want to go with Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, HBO. You got YouTube, Netflix, and tons of others that you can download from the Google Play Store, including Disney+. And that's really what this thing was made for, and I really expected it to work fine with all of those apps. But I still wanted to test some 4K video playback with Plex. We're going to be doing some high bitrate stuff, 4K, 60fps. So first up, we'll go with this one. 4K, 60fps, 78 megabits per second. Now this doesn't have Ethernet built in, so you do need a decent router for this to work correctly. And these videos we're taking a look at right now are actually streaming from one of my good friend's servers. He set these up as kind of demo videos for me. And for the most part, I've had really good luck over my AC Wi-Fi connection. But every once in a while with these high bitrate 4K 60 videos, I do notice some buffering. We're gonna try to make that happen now. So we'll move over to a different one. This is 4K, 60 FPS, 75 megabits per second. And I tested this one a little earlier, took a lot longer to load, and I did run into some buffering issues. Now this could all be fixed over ethernet, but unfortunately this doesn't have ethernet built in. So it's working really smooth here. Everything's looking great. And it's probably gonna play fine now that I'm filming the screen here. Nope, there we go. So yeah, I mean, this doesn't really have to do with the CPU and GPU that they have in this little unit. This really has to do with the network. So overall, for video playback out of this little device, I'm actually pretty impressed. I was expecting a lot less out of this device given that it's a TiVo branded Android TV. But with everything that I've tested so far, except for those super high bitrate videos from Plex, I've had really good luck. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, HBO, and even Disney Plus. 720, 1080, and 4K work just fine. So we've got video playback out of the way. It does a decent job at that, but what about native Android gaming? I know some people want to pick these up and play a few games here and there. And from the Google Play Store, there is a lot of games that you can download and play on something like this, but let's see how it really performs. So first up, we have Real Racing 3, and for these games I just plugged into my game capture so we could get a better look at it. I am connected with an Xbox One controller, and performance isn't great with this. This is a 3D game, it's actually a very well optimized game, and I've had good luck on lower end devices running this. But as you can see, it is really, really choppy on this device. And to be fair about this, this is not marketed as a gaming device at all, it's marketed as a video playback device. But I was actually expecting a little better performance at least out of this game. Because it's been on the market for a while and it's very highly optimized for lower end devices. Next up we have Minecraft Pocket Edition and I just went ahead and side loaded this because it's not available on the Android TV store. I did go into the settings and turn off fancy graphics, I've also turned the chunks down and as you can see there's lots of pop in. Now this is the beta version, so I do have the FPS listed. It's around 41 FPS when we're sitting on the ground, but when we get up in the sky, it'll drop down to around 19. In my opinion, it's really not that playable. So as you saw, the 3D games aren't working great, but the 2D stuff is perfectly playable on here. If you want to do things like Crossy Road or even some lower end stuff like Turbo Dismount, it should work just fine. I know a lot of my regular viewers are waiting for some emulation, and I did throw some in this video. 
First up, we have N64 using Moopin 64 FZ from the Google Play Store. Like I mentioned, I'm using an Xbox One controller, and to my surprise, performance isn't that bad. I mean, to tell you the truth, this is actually pretty good. Now, I don't expect this to run every N64 game at full speed, but for the easier to run stuff, like this one here, you want to do some Mario, some Banjo, and even some Zelda, you can definitely get by using a device like this. Moving over to Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. I'm at the lowest resolution, which comes like that out of the box, and I do have frame skip on. This is the original Soul Calibur. As you can see, the FPS is up in the top right hand corner, and it's playable. The emulation performance of the TiVo stream is definitely on par with the new Google Chromecast with Google TV built in. I've done a few videos on that recently, and I was really hoping it would be because after all, we do have the same CPU and the same amount of RAM here. So the TiVo Stream 4K does work, and it works well for its intended purpose, video playback, and not to mention we do have some pretty decent emulation performance here also. But since this is sitting at the same price as the new Chromecast, I would choose the Chromecast over this every single day. But like I mentioned, if this does go on sale for Black Friday or any other holiday event for around 20 to 30 bucks, I think it would be well worth picking one of these up for a secondary Android TV, especially at that lower price point. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on the TiVo stream, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.